Hello and welcome to the daily cricket show, Cricket Happenings, dear friends and subscribers. Uh, well, you might see uh, the enthusiasm might be lacking in this show of mine today because basically I'm a bit under the weather uh, with, uh, with uh, having some uh, ear and throat problems where I'm having a bit of a pain as well on my ear and my throat uh, but uh, as you know I keep the show going um, and uh, today I won't really really stretch myself in an exi in, a, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sense of excitement that I normally do uh, but definitely I'll be talking about cricket uh, in a very very brief manner today so pardon me dear friends subscribers uh, and uh, what I'm going to look at today is the first day's play in the second test match between West Indies and uh, India uh, played at Hyderabad where West Indies uh, definitely did a great job compared to what they did. They had Kemar Roche back but Jason Holder uh, as a captain makes a difference as I said. He scored a half century but the man who really held the innings together was Roston Chase. I mean uh, the West Indies were in a very, very <coughs> sorry state uh, at one point of time, but uh, it was Hal Roston Chase who, along in the company of uh, Jason Holder and Shane Dowridge, rallied West Indies to a score of 295 for 7 at close of play, with Roston Chase uh, just too short of a century which probably should be either his second or third century against India. <coughs> and we always remember his match-saving knock for West Indies in the Caribbean uh, when, uh, when a match against India, which probably one would have written off West Indies. And it was, um, uh, it was something that, like yesterday, how Usman Khwaja uh, saved um, uh, Australia against Pakistan. Um, this was Roston Chase doing it against India in the Caribbean. I do remember that. And um, they closed at 295 for 7. And as I said, the West Indies at one stage of the game were really in the dumps at uh, 113 for 5. <coughs> but a recovery, thanks to Dowdich and Holder, who gave company to Roston Chase. And Roston Chase was very good against the spinners. And he took his time at the crease. He was not out of 98, truly deserving a century of flawless innings from Roston Chase which I'll be talking about. And the next thing which I'll be talking about is the second T20 match which happened between Zimbabwe and South Africa, where South Africa won the T20 series as Zimbabwe, uh, even though uh, they did a good job, I thought, but uh, they themselves were restricted uh, by the South African balling to just 132 uh, for seven in my reckoning. Uh, I'll be telling you about that and the South Africans uh, got to a victory and uh, not uh, I wouldn't say in a very easy manner because there was a bit of pressure on them with the Zimbabwean bowlers bowling well <coughs> um, but um, finally uh, it was uh, South Africa the victors against Zimbabwe in the second T20 and also uh, the the second one day international uh, uh, ODI uh, would be starting as you know the first one was rained out uh, and just to go back to the Zimbabwe South Africa match which was played at Pochers room Zimbabwe um, making 132 for 7 and South Africa uh, won the match by 6 wickets which I will have a brief look at so as I said today I won't be going into much details but generally talking about the match in a very general manner and the second ODI between England and Sri Lanka is also threatened by a bit of uh, threatened by rain after the first um, uh, ODI was washed out. So let me begin off, <coughs> and I think it would be a short show because, as I said, because of my ear and throat problems, I wouldn't be able to dwell in greater detail. So sorry about it. So West Indies won the toss, and as I said, they were strengthened by the presence of Kemar Rose and Jason Holder. India went in with the same combination. Uh, that played in the, uh, the winning combination. They kept up the uh, winning combination. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's have a look at what really happened. So uh, looking at the, um, uh, I'm just going to 
uh, go back to that and I'm going to talk about it. Um, as far as India and West Indies were concerned, this is the second test match and today was the first day uh, of the second test at Hyderabad. Uh, well, uh, Ashwin was the one uh, who act and it was a good toss to win. Uh, for Jason Holder, uh, everything went right. Uh, he called right at the toss, he won the toss and uh, immediately uh, he went into, uh, he asked his uh, wards to uh, bat first. Uh, which was the way to be done, uh, according to me. And uh, so he did that. And uh, Ashwin was the one who actually uh, drew first blood uh, for India uh, with the wicket, uh, I think, also of Kiron Powell. So I'm going to look into it and I'm going to tell you about that. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, I'm trying to see uh, as to what really is going on. So. As I said, uh, uh, West Indies uh, really, really struggled. Uh, some very good reverse swing bowling uh, from Umesh Yadav. Uh, and the spinners also ruled the roost with Kuldeep Yadav befuddling the West Indies batsman uh, with a lot of googlies uh, where he actually snapped up his wickets. <coughs> and so Ashwin was bowling well. And the other end, uh, Umesh Yadav was reverse swinging the ball uh, to good effect. Uh, and getting wickets uh, um, very, very quickly. And as I said, the West Indians were reduced to 113 for six uh, at one stage of the game. So, and as I said, it was Roston Chase who actually uh, played very well. It was a flawless innings from Roston Chase. Uh, he came in and as I said, he rallied uh, the West Indians uh, in the support of uh, the captain, Jason Holder and the wicketkeeper batsman Shane Dowridge to lead the West Indies fight back as West Indies recovered uh, in a wonderful manner to 295 for 7 at close of play on the first day. Now, um, Roston Chase, uh, as far as his batting was concerned, he was confidence personified and is a very good player of spin. One saw that he was using his reach uh, very well to really, really smaller the uh, Indian spinners in a very nice manner and not allowing them to actually rule against him and which was very well done. A good support and also it was a flawless innings. Uh, he rarely made a false stroke in that innings, uh, barring one of the strokes probably. <coughs> so definitely Roston Chase also what one saw was done. West Indies have realized uh, that, um, uh, you know, uh, just uh, talking about the first test where they started uh, committing uh, a lot of mistakes by going, attacking the Indian bowling, that was not to be today. Today they realized the value of the singles. So Roston Chase in particular, if you look at his innings, uh, he took a lot of singles and he did not hit a lot of boundaries. But uh, the main thing was occupation of the crease, which he did well. And uh, also, uh, in between, whenever uh, the Indian bowlers was bowling the ball short, uh, he was rocking back and pulling those deliveries too. So let's have a look at what happened. So as I said, uh, Ravichandra Nashwin <coughs> was the man uh, who actually uh, picked up the uh, first wicket and that was of Kiran Powell. When Kiran Powell was uh, caught by Jareja of the bowling of Ashwin. So that was wicket number he wanted to, Kiran Powell wanted to come down the wicket and hit uh, Ashwin out of the attack and Ashwin was very smart to bowl a good delivery and Jadeja took the catch. Kiran Powell gone uh, out for 22 with four boundaries. Um, West Indies were 32 for one. Shai Hope came in and joined uh, Brathwaite and the next to go was um, uh, Craig Brathwaite. <coughs> Craig Brathwaite, this was a wonderful delivery from uh, Kuldi Piado. Uh, there was a lot of revolutions on the delivery um, uh, in fact, Brathwaite was, uh, uh, was, was trapped LBW, um, uh, you know, he was trapped LBW uh, for 14 with two boundaries, which made the score 52 for two. And the next to go was Solomon Hetmere. Uh, Solomon Hetmere was also LBW to the bowling of Kuldi Piyadav. He could not read the wrong one, wrong one that was bowled by Kuldi Piyadav, which is the stock ball of Kuldi, as we all know, the Chinaman. And um, <coughs> it was all over. Um, in fact, um, Hatmir uh, was uh, plumb in front. He patched it up 
and uh, up went the umpire's finger. Solomon had been gone. LBW bowled Kuldeep Yadav for 12 with two boundaries. Sunil Lambris came in to join Shai Hope. Shai Hope was uh, looking uh, in good touch uh, at that stage, uh, but Shai Hope did not last long. In fact, before Hitmeyer, uh, Shai Hope also fell. Now, this was Umesh Yadav uh, coming in uh, with his reverse swing uh, to get the wicket of uh, Shai Hope. He beat him for pace as uh, the ball um, uh, was basically uh, um, the, the, the ball that um, Umesh Yadav bowled. Um, he was, uh, got the ball to actually see him in. And uh, with the late moment, Shai Hope was trapped in front. LBW bowl Yadav for 36 with 5 fours, 86 for 3. And then Solomon Hatmir went 92 for 4. Sunil Ambris was also a victim, the third victim for um, uh, Kuldeep uh, Yadav. Uh, and this was another wrong one uh, where Ambrose was trying to hit um, a Kuldeep Yadav over the top and it was all over. This time was caught by Jadija at cover region, 113 for 5 and the West Indian innings looked like uh, going uh, in the same vein as the first test match. But <coughs> Roston Chase came in and uh, Dowdich gave him good support uh, to... Uh, to, uh, uh, to actually uh, push on the, uh, to actually go and push on the score uh, to, from 113 they recovered to 182, but only just one could say, uh, because um, it was a partnership uh, which was, which added 69 runs. Uh, and Shane Dowdich and Umesh Yadav uh, came back and he struck uh, by breaking this partnership when Shane Dowdich was LBW bowled Yadav and this was some reverse swing for uh, Umesh Yadav and um, it, he took uh, Dowdich um, LBW uh, for uh, 30 with 4 fours and 1 6. But Roston Chase as I said he was doing a good job he was doing very well with the spinners he had a long stride he was smothering the spinners uh, deliveries very well and um, he was doing a fantastic job as Jason Holder the captain joined uh, the score ran 189 uh, for uh, 82 for 6. And then uh, then there was a good partnership. Jason Holder looked very solid at the crease. Roston Chase was growing in confidence. And things started moving along very well for the West Indies as a, um, a seventh wicket partnership happened, which added 104 runs to the good. As Jason Holder <coughs> showed his value to the team, by getting his 50 in the very first uh, match he played uh, after missing the first test. He made 52 with six bow fours <coughs> before Umesh Yadav uh, picked up his wicket uh, just before close of play uh, as um, um, Holder was um, actually, uh, the, he got a ball uh, which was um, down the leg side uh, and Holder actually glowed it as um, uh, he knew for a fact that he was already out and Jason Holder like a sportsman was walking back to the pavilion even not waiting for the umpire's decision as Rishabh Pant uh, took the catch behind the wickets and Jason Holder 52 with 6 fours and then Devendra Bishu walked out and when Stumps were drawn for the day uh, Roston Chase was the one who was uh, leading the West Indies with 98 not out at the crease Bishu was not out on 2 and that was the match situation on the first day of the second test match between India and the West Indies. Now, Umesh Yadav uh, really exhibited some great reverse swing bowling, which he's a good exponent of. 23 overs, 2 maidens, 83 runs and 3 wickets for Umesh Yadav. Um, uh, Shardul Thakur uh, was uh, the one who actually, um, um, actually had a growing strain and he could not continue his bowling. After bowling 1.4 overs, no maidens, none for 9. He went off. <coughs> India um, uh, did not have Shami today. They instead decided to go for a spinner. Ravichandran Ashwin, 24.2 over 7 maidens, 49 runs and 1 wicket. Kuldi Piyadu, 26 2, 74 and 3 wickets. And Jadeja was wicketless, 20 overs, 2 maidens, none for 69. So definitely, West Indies is doing a much better job than what they did in the first test. Now uh, we go on to the second T20. Uh, that happened between Zimbabwe and South Africa and the Zimbabwean batsmen really found the going tough uh, on a pitch which was not really very easy to bat on one could say at Pochestrum 
<coughs> where the ball was holding up a, a, a bit here. And if you look at the Zimbabwean innings, they made 132 for seven, the highest scorer being Sean Williams, uh, who showed, uh, showed a bit of um, real fight here uh, by slamming 41 of 28 deliveries, uh, which included two fours and three sixes. And the three sixes was hit off uh, the uh, baller Tabai Shamsi. Now, the advantage that Zimbabwe had today, their nemesis uh, Imran Tahir was rested and he was not playing. So definitely uh, it was a good opportunity for Zimbabwe, but Zimbabwe could not do it. Masakadza was bowled by Fralim for 21 of as many balls, two fours, two sixes. Solomon Meyer bowled by uh, Dane Patterson was the man of the match for just one run. <coughs> Brendan Taylor making 29 of 47, two fours, one six, bowled by Shamsi. Musakanda was out for naught. Williams of the one was the highest scorer with 41. Peter Moon made nine, Chugumbra six, Chisoro not out 14, uh, Mahuta not out seven, and 132 for seven was never going to be a good score. Lungi Giri was costly today. He, he was the one who was targeted today. Four was two for 36. Patterson uh, got the man of the match award bowled well. Four was two for 22. Uh, Robbie Fryling, four was two for 20. Philukwai was economical. Philukwai was the pick of the bowlers. Four overs for 15 runs for Philukwai, the all-rounder. Shamsi, um, four overs, one for 37. <coughs> so South Africa, given a target of 133 to win, decided to uh, promote uh, the uh, the maiden uh, 50 on debut, Vander Dessen, the talented one, to open the innings today. They dropped the... Um, uh, the debutant to played in the first um, first T20, uh, uh, Gerard Cloyd, and they brought Van der Dusen to open the innings, which was a good ploy according to me because Van der Dusen really likes to get on with the game. But um, definitely it was not to be. Van der Dusen was caught and pulled by Pofu for 13 of just eight balls, which included one four and one six. Uh, Quinton de Kock was uh, clean bowled by uh, Brian Mauta. Um, by uh, the leg, leg spinner for 26 of 23, 3 fours, 1 6. Duplessis was bowled by Sean Williams for 12, and there was some bit of pressure on the uh, South Africans there because their score read 58 for 3 when Duplessis departed in the seventh over. And then there was a bit of pressure uh, with the spinners, Mauta, uh, and the other bowlers, Patterson, uh, sorry, the other bowlers like Pofu. Uh, Pofu was a bit costly today. In fact, uh, Chisora was also. So uh, they definitely put a bit of pressure, not a lot of pressure, but a bit of pressure. <coughs> but um, Dubin and Klaassen made sure that um, uh, South Africa would win this match with uh, Klaassen uh, hitting f 22 of 15 deliveries, 1, 4 and 2, 6s. And then finally, J.P. Dubin was there along with David Miller to take them home. Dubin finished not out 33 of 26, 3, 4, 1, 6. David Miller not out 19. Of 13 deliveries for, uh, with four fours and it was a six wicket victory which also uh, won the South Africa the T20 series as there's one more to come uh, which uh, is uh, basically a matter of uh, uh, Zimbabwe going and salvaging some prestige for themselves uh, by winning against South Africa. Uh, Jarvis was costly <laughs> two overs for 29. Pofu was also costly 3.4 overs no made and one for 31. The spinner, three overs for 21 for Chisoro. Mahuta, four overs, one for 29, but bowled well. Sean Williams, three overs, two for 25. And Dane Patterson was named man of the match. So that is as far as South Africa and, and Zimbabwe were concerned. Now, uh, the second ODI, which is coming up uh, between England and Sri Lanka, <coughs> one only hopes uh, that the rain stays away, but there is a forecast. We could expect some interruptions. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, one is waiting for the second ODI uh, between England and Sri Lanka uh, to start uh, because so that is very sad that um, it is played in the uh, in the uh, in, in the in a in a in a month where it is extremely wet in Sri Lanka, uh, which is very sad uh, that uh, it is again going to be played uh, in the same ground, which is in Dambula. And um, looking at uh, the uh, teams. Uh, well, it will be very good to see uh, Ollie Stone uh, get a ball because he has been precisely selected uh, because he is a genuine pace bowler for England 
and uh, one would definitely like to watch Oli Stone uh, in action for sure. Well, dear fans, um, Oli Stone, yes, one would probably have a look at Oli Stone tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see how Oli Stone balls because a lot of things have been talked about that he's a very genuine pace baller. It'll be interesting to see uh, when he's, uh, when he's uh, uh, really released uh, to bowl against the Sri Lankans. <laughs> and um, other than that, um, I'm not going to do any pre preview as I said. Uh, my ear and throat is uh, is not something which is uh, really really uh, cooperating today, unfortunately. But as I said, uh, as as this is my daily cricket show, I love to do it, and I'm here just because of you, dear fans and subscribers, to come and uh, talk on this uh, game of cricket uh, today. So I um, I'm not going to say whether I hope you enjoyed the show uh, because uh, that is something. I can understand uh, there's not been really much enthusiasm on the show, but nevertheless, uh, all the loyal uh, uh, subscribers and friends of mine uh, who definitely would be uh, watching my cricket show, it all goes to them uh, and also the people who also uh, from time to time watch my cricket show. Well, dear fans and subscribers, it's about time for me uh, to bid you all a very good night. Thank you.